what are you doing? I've been trying to itch my back all day. I can't seem to get it. I got something for that. John! John! Black Scratcher! 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 What are you guys doing? Uh, right there, right there. Oh, uh, he pays me money and I uh, scratch his back because he can't reach it himself. I just got too big. I mean, you could do some mobility work, maybe. Yeah, yeah, but mobility work just gets you biceps like these, Josh. Yeah, but it does help you get the stick off your back. Hey, can you, can you get the stick off my back? Five dollars. Oh, too bad. How's it going, guys? Josh here with Dedicated Health. And the day has finally come for me to tell you about stretching. As I said in the warm-up video, it's not a warm-up, but it doesn't mean you don't need to do it. There's a lot of big guys out there that just disregard mobility work altogether because they don't think it helps them because all they really care about is those big beach muscles. I don't want you to turn into one of those guys because mobility is important. Just like if you don't warm up a muscle and ask too much of it, it's going to hurt itself. If you ask too much of a tight muscle, it's going to hurt itself. And if that's not a good enough reason to get you to start stretching, the resting tension of a muscle, how it looks whenever it's not flexed, really depends on how flexible that muscle is. So if you flex a muscle, the resting tension of the muscle is going to be a little bit better, so you're going to look a little bit better too. So if you want to look good, you're going to want to stretch too. There's more than one benefit to this. So just like with the warm-up, I don't feel like stretching should take too long either. I threw together this quick 6 to 10 minute stretching routine that you can do every single day. Now what's important is when you do it. You can do it right after a workout, which is good, and I recommend that, but the best time to do it is right before you go to bed. Before you go to sleep, that's your last chance to really stretch out a muscle and make sure that it doesn't get too tight and shorten. You don't want that to happen, so try to get this in right before you go to bed. It's also gonna help you with sleep. Every night, if you stretch before you go to bed, you're going to sleep better. You just are. Your body's gonna be more relaxed and it's gonna get into that resting routine. And if you part, put that as part of your before bed ritual, it will get your mind in the routine of going to bed after you stretch, which is really cool. Just like if you warm up before you exercise and you get your head in the right space to hit the weights, if you get your head in the right space to go to sleep, then your body's going to get used to that and you will sleep better. So there's so many benefits to this, not just how you look, not getting hurt, and of course being healthy, but you can also look better, feel better, and perform better if you do this. So without further ado, this is going to be a follow along style stretching routine, but I want you to do this every day. So what you'll need for this is just to remember what you've got to do, a wall and a stopwatch, or you can just hit the timestamp and skip straight to the stretching if you want to, and you can follow along this video whenever you need to. So let's go ahead and get started and I'll show you what we're doing comes to the full body today. stretch, I like to follow some of the same guidelines that I talked about in the warm up video. I like to start from the ground up because that's how the connect chain functions. I also like to target the muscles that are chronically tight on the average individual. For example, on our lower half of our body, we typically have a tighter posterior chain because we spend so much time sitting. Once we get to the upper part of our body though, the story changes. Our anterior chain is a lot tighter just because we spend so much time hunched over our cell phones or on laptops. Every stretch that you see me doing here is going to be held for at least 30 seconds. The reason for this is that's how long it takes to activate the GTO. The GTO is responsible for making a muscle relax and actually lengthen. The stretch you see me doing here is a double calf stretch. This is a really good stretch because it kills two birds with one stone. You're stretching both calves at the same time. The way you start up is you put your toes on the wall with your front leg and put your back leg out behind you. You want to make sure you try to keep both your heels on the ground the whole time. You want to try to bring the knee on your front leg forward like you're trying to touch the wall with it. From here, you just want to hold it for as long as you can. Try to make it to that 30 second mark. Next up, we're going to stretch out those hamstrings. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have tried touching your toes before, and I bet a lot of you can. But I'm going to make it a little bit more difficult for you. I want you to make sure your back is as straight as a table. You want your hips in an anterior tilt. So this is less of a reaching towards your toes and more of like a hip hinge. If you keep your hips in an anterior tilt and your back not rounded, you're going to feel a lot more of a stretch in your hamstrings, which is very important because that's the goal here. Next up is a quad stretch. 
Now, you can do this one from the ground too, so you can do this leg on your side if you want to, and there's some benefits and perks to doing it that way. I personally prefer doing it this way because it forces you to work on your balance as well, which is a very important thing. I feel like we don't work on this nearly enough, and if you want to, instead of having to break the stretch whenever you lose your balance, you can do this in front of a wall or next to a chair so that you can grab it instead of having to put your foot down. It's very important to hold the stretch for 30 seconds, so I recommend if you can't stay in the position, having something to hang on to if you have to. Another important thing about the stretch is you don't want to just pull your heel to your butt. What you're trying to do is actually pull your leg back in a way. This is going to get more of a stretch on your quad than you would if you were just pulling your heel to your butt. If you look here, you can see that I'm not even trying to touch my heel to my butt, I'm more just pulling it back. This is a very important part of the stretch because if you just pull your heel to your butt, you're going to put a lot of pressure on your knee and you don't want that. Next up is a hip flexor stretch. Now this is one of my favorite stretches because you get to hit your lats a little bit too. What you're going to do is get into a bit of a lunge position and drive your hips forward. I know it sounds kind of funny, but basically what you're trying to do is thrust your crotch towards the opposite wall. If you do it right, you will feel it instantly. It should be right in front of your back leg that you feel the stretch the most. If you look at it from this position, you can see that I'm trying to keep my hips square too. I'm not just rounding or twisting the hips. I am keeping my hips square and sort of tilting my pelvis towards the opposite wall. Next up, we're going to stretch the abs out. I actually really love stretching the abs because, like I was talking about before, it will make the resting tension of the abs a lot better. We also don't stretch our abs out very often at all. So what we're going to do is start by laying in a push-up position with your hands as close to your sides as possible, just on the outside of the ribcage. You're then going to push up and pick your chest up off the ground. Stretch more intense by pointing your chin towards the ceiling. Next up is a chest stretch. From here, you want to lay back down on your stomach and keep one arm close to where you had it whenever you're doing the ab stretch. The other arm you want to have straight out to your side. You want to push up with the arm that you had close to your chest and look away. This is going to stretch the side of your chest with the outstretched arm. If you look at it from this position, you can see that if you look away from the outstretched arm, you're going to actually make the stretch feel a little bit more intense. This will also help if you're not really feeling the stretch very much. It helped me out a lot. I like this chest stretch particularly because you don't need a wall or anything to do it, and it's easy to move into after you get done with the ab stretch. Next up is probably my favorite stretch of all time. This is a lower back stretch. What you want to do is sink back onto your heels in a kneeling position. You want to have your arms out in front of you and you want to feel like you're constantly trying to walk your arms away from you. You want to keep your back fairly straight and feel like you're trying to just pull your arms away from your butt and your butt to your heels. This is a great lower back stretch and to be honest, I think it feels amazing. Last but not least, we want to stretch out our lats. So what you want to do is get in a cross-legged position and lean over to one side. Take your arm and reach across your body, and imagine you're trying to touch the ground with the arm that is above your head. You're going to be leaning over and you should feel a good stretch. You can lean onto your opposite arm if you need to. This will give you a little bit more support and balance, and it makes it a little bit easier to focus on the stretch and not trying to contract your core to keep yourself in that position. Okay, once you're done with that, go ahead and stretch the other side out. 
If you feel like you have more range of motion on one side than the other, then go ahead and do another round on the side that you have the most range of motion on. It's very important to try to balance yourself out, which can be kind of hard, and if you can't tell if you have more range of motion on one side than the other, ask someone whenever you're doing the stretch if it looks like you're reaching the ground more on one side than the other, or film yourself doing it and look for yourself. After recording this, I realized I can do the other side a little bit better than I can this side, so I'm going to work on that. Okay guys, there you have it. Getting rid of the excuse if I don't have time to stretch. If you have six minutes, you have time to stretch, and you should be doing it. Even on your off days, if you don't work out that day, that's fine. Still get some stretching in. In fact, you probably have more of a reason to do that day because you're recovering from the day that you worked out before that. This is important, guys, and I hope to see you do it more often. If you guys have any cool stretching routines that you'd like to share, go ahead and share it on Instagram or Facebook and tag us at Dedicated Health Gym to let us see what you got. I can't wait to see your cool stretching routines. And until next time, stay dedicated. If you're looking for a program that uses exercises like these and in the right way, head over to DedicatedHealthGym.com and we'll take care of any of your fitness needs. We have supplements, online training, even a full gym facility if you're ever in the Terre Haute region. Just stop by, say hi, and remember, always stay dedicated.